Community groups which rely on funds recovered from crime will have to wait several months for cash after COVID hampered police seizures. Delays in court dates and limits on physical distancing have meant police have been unable to get a hold of the cars, boats, bikes or properties owned and used by criminals. That's meant fewer sales and less money in the kitty for the programmes which use it to help reduce crime and improve wellbeing. Cameraman Nick Munro and reporter Nita Blakeperson filed this report. It's the end of the road for this $270,000 Mercedes four-wheel drive. Seized from an Auckland property by police, it's off to join dozens of other cars, Porsches, Audis, Lamborghinis and bikes and boats at government storage facilities. It's, it's all sorts of things that a lot of vehicles involved, you know, usually very flash vehicles. Obviously there's houses involved uh, too. Justice Minister Andrew Little says those assets confiscated under the Proceeds of Crime Act are recovered under court orders before going under the hammer at auction. But seizures and sales have been behind schedule due to COVID lockdowns and restrictions. There was a delay in, in selling assets that were gathered in, in the early part of the year and it's not until more recently that they've been able to be sold. The money from sales goes into a fund to be contested by different government agencies. The scope of the fund was widened last year to include initiatives that have a well-being focus and address crime-related harm. But this year's delay means those initiatives will have to wait. Because the nature of the fund is it tends to be new programmes and, and often innovative programmes, then anybody who had a brilliant idea that thought they were going to get funded early this year, um, they will have a delay and getting their application processed and if they're successful getting their monies. Once it's allocated, it's used for you know drug and alcohol rehabilitation services in the community, some rehabilitation services within prisons, uh, some community support activities for, you know, for other victims, um, and, and the crime fighting stuff too, supporting the crime fighting effort that allows us to go after uh, the drug kingpins and those who are sort of peddling in misery. The fund isn't just limited to the flash cars and fancy houses. Detective Inspector Craig Hamilton leads the Police Asset Recovery Unit and says lockdown also led to the biggest asset seizure on record, $140 million. We had our largest seizure um, ever during, uh, during COVID and that was a, a big complex uh, you know, money laundering investigation involving uh, you know, foreign counterparts. We brought all that together uh, during Level 2, which was really pleasing. He said overall seizures hadn't increased as a result of COVID and career criminals changed their business to cope with COVID's challenges. You know, we have seen prices of, of some drugs increase as a, as a result of, so I guess it's harder to get into the country, but it's still out there. There's still lots of it out there. And, um, you know, globally, um, one of the, the things that's emerged from uh, COVID is, that, you know, organised crime has, has adapted to other new emerging sort of crime type to exploit, you know, the opportunities that COVID's presented them. He says there's been a spike in meth prices as a result of COVID, but there's still plenty of supply out there. As part of its plans to tackle methamphetamine use, the National Party is proposing to establish a social investment framework for the Proceeds of Crime Fund to fight organised crime. Such a framework already exists and Andrew Little says programmes that are already receiving funding won't be affected by this year's delays. Push the start time out of some new programmes, but it won't affect any existing programmes that are already funded out of previous grants made from the fund. Applications for the funds will close next week with the money expected to be distributed early next year. For Checkpoint, Nita Blakeperson.